everyone! Today I want to talk about why it's become such a trend to not set your eyeshadow primer and to go in on a sticky base when you're working with eyeshadows, especially if you're working with colorful eyeshadows. And I'm going to prove it to you why it's better to not set your primer than it is to set your primer. So I'm going to do the same look on both eyes, but I'll be using sort of different techniques on the sides where I don't set my primer to the sides where I do set my primer and I'll explain to you why. So I'm first going to start by priming and I'm going to use the primer that I always use and this is my MAC Paint Pot. And the reason why I like this is because it has a little bit of color to it so it'll kind of even out any redness or whatever might be going on on your eyelids. So we're just going to start off by doing one eye at a time because I don't want my primer to really dry down while I do one eye. So I'm going to start off with this eye and I'm also going to set this. And to do so, I'll be using a nude colored eyeshadow. This is just a single that I have from Wet n Wild. And I'm just going to generously dust this all over where I put down the primer to make sure that everything is coated because it's going to make it easier to blend, like people say. So what sparked me to make this video was that I got a comment on a palette bingo that I did a while back using my Carity All Matte palette. And this person was saying that she really doesn't like this palette and she feels like a lot of YouTubers are not being truthful when they review palettes because she's seen a lot of people say that they like this palette and she thinks it's really bad. And so I was kind of saying like it depends a lot on how you apply your eyeshadows. If you use a technique where you don't set your eyeshadows, you can really make any shadows work. But if you do go in on a set base, it's going to be a lot harder for certain formulas, especially colorful shadows, to kind of get a little bit patchy, not get as pigmented as you want. They won't blend as nicely, they won't build as nicely. So I'm going to try to show you that today by using this palette. Now, I'm not saying that this is a bad palette at all. I, I actually think it's a really good palette and I'm going to show you guys because I think this palette deserves more credit than what it's getting. So I want to be using green shades today because those seem to be the worst shades in this palette, at least some of them, so I'm gonna really like show you why I think this is a better way to apply eyeshadows. So I'm first going to start off by taking this yellow shade. I know I said I was gonna use green, but first I'm going to take the yellow and I'm gonna put that in my crease. And so this is how most people would go in with their eyeshadows. They're gonna use a big fluffy brush. This is the E35 from Sigma. And so I'm just gonna start off by really blending this into my crease now. And I'm going to really pack on the color and make sure I get as much pigment out of it as I possibly can. And as you can see, this shade is not a bad shade. Next up, with a smaller fluffy brush, I'm going to dip into this lightest of the green shades. I got my brush very nicely coated. This is a Morphe M506 brush, and I'm going to start by putting this into my inner corner and then also building up my crease. And you can see here that the pigmentation is not amazing in these shadows when you use them this way. So what seems to be the norm for most people is to go from lightest shade to darkest shade when you're building up your crease. And I'm going to show you the opposite way afterwards to really show how that's going to make a difference with the pigmentation of your shadows. And so you can see this is not a bad shade at all and these two shades are still showing up nicely on my eyes. They're pretty pigmented. I don't think anybody would really like complain about this if they had this palette. So this is about as much as I'm able to build a shade up. Next, I'm going to go into the darkest of the shades, and that is the dark green down here. And I'm going to take that on my same brush. And again, I'm going to go in and really darken up the outer corner. And as you can see now, this is not the best shade in the palette because it doesn't really stick on to my eyelid that well but I'm still able to get a little bit of pigmentation out of it. And so this is about as dark as I am able to build up these shadows. And I'm also going to go in and do the same thing on my lower lash line. I'm first taking that yellow shade and I'm going to really buff this out. Next I'm going in with the middle of the green shades. And then lastly, the darkest of them, and I'm just putting that close to my lash line. And I'm just taking my big brush to just blend everything out. And for my inner corner, I'm going to go into my BH Cosmetics Weekend Festival palette, and I'm going to use this neon shade down here, which is just a very nice green shimmer. 
So here is just a super simple monochromatic look that you can do using very few shades. Now I'm going to go in and prime my eyes on the other side. Still using my MAC Pink Pot. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing now is I'm not going to be setting this with any kind of powder or eyeshadow at all. I'm going to go straight in with my shadows and as you can probably imagine, it's going to be kind of hard if you go in with a big fluffy brush and try to just blend on top of something that is sticky. So what I'll be doing is I'll be using a smaller fluffy brush and I'm going to start off by putting the darkest shade down first. So I'm first going to go in with that darkest green in my outer corner. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want every single shadow to have something sticky to kind of grab onto and that way the pigmentation of the shadows is also going to be a lot more vibrant. So I'm going to start by just really packing this onto my outer corner of my eye. And as you can see already, this is so much more pigmented than it is on this side. And I'm keeping this pretty low down because I am going to go in with two other shades afterwards to blend this out. And so instead of using back and forth motions, I'm using padding motions. And this will really help to prevent any kind of patchiness because you're really saturating the area with eyeshadow. So next I'm going to take my same brush and I'm dipping into that medium strength green. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just pack this on top of where I just put down the other shade. Still making sure to leave a little bit of room for that yellow up top. And then last I'm going to dip into the yellow, still using that same brush. And I'm just going to do the same thing. And you can really see how this yellow pops on this side compared to what it does on the other side. And the difference is actually quite substantial. And I would really recommend you guys try this if you haven't already. Take a palette that you don't really like, that you're not happy with the pigmentation of, or that the shades just kind of aren't working well for you. Try using this, this technique and I promise you that it's going to be a lot easier to make the shadows work together. And you might think that, oh my god, like this is going to take so much more time than it would if I just did it the regular way, but honestly, it really doesn't. Because you can tell now, I didn't even go in and blend like more than once. Like I only put down a shadow and that was it. And so now if I wanted to, I could go over here again and just like blend a little bit right where I put down the green and the yellow just to kind of make it look a little bit more seamless. But honestly, like from far away, you don't really have to blend that much more than this. And so I'm sure you can tell just from the two sides that this side is definitely looking a lot better and I'm hoping that shows up on camera. So I'm going to just put that same shimmery shade on my lid here and then we can do the bottom lash line. So for my lower lash line, I'm also going to go in with a little bit of primer just so that we can make this sticky as well. And you can do this with any primer, it doesn't have to be MAC Paint Pot or anything like that. But I would recommend using an eyeshadow primer instead of a concealer. At least I've just found that that works better for me. Uh, if concealer works for you, that's probably fine too. And this time I'm going to do the same thing I did on my upper lid. I'm going to go in with my darkest shade first. And I'm just going to pack that close to my lower lash line. Then I'm taking the lighter green shade. And I'm going to put that right below where I put the darkest green. And lastly, take in the yellow. And then just connecting that inner corner to my lower lash line. So I'm going to just quickly go finish up the rest of my face. I'm going to put on some liner and mascara and lipstick. And I will be back shortly to show you the finished result. Okay, so this is the finished look. Let me know down below your thoughts on uh, doing your eyeshadows this way because I know I was hesitant for such a long time and I was like, no, no, I don't need to do this. Like, this is fine. This seems like it's too hard. It seems like too much work. But honestly, as soon as I started doing it, because I was seeing a lot of people having such good success with it, I was like, okay, this makes sense. So now that I've played around with it a lot more and I feel like I'm getting a hang of doing it this way, I really don't want to go back to doing it the other way. So yeah, um, I'm going to show you guys some close-ups right now. And it might not be the biggest difference in the world, but I personally can see it when I look up close. I can see that the left side is way more pigmented than my right side and that the shadows just look way more vibrant. They went on the eye much more pigmented. It took way less work to get them to really build up. So I would say doing eyeshadows this way is definitely the way of the future. And I feel like this is the kind of technique that a lot of people are going to be using from now on. And 
I am really happy that I started doing it this way because I can really see a big difference. So thank you so much for watching as always. And if you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe and join my family. And hopefully I will see you all in my next video. Bye.